today. I'm so excited. <laughs> Joy comes in the morning. Welcome. If this is your first time here, get ready. Today is just a beautiful day, wonderful day to be together. Today is very different at Prey Heights. We have a unique opportunity um, to come together as a church family to experience Jesus in a whole new way to experience faith. And so, hey, if you're a guest with us today, I want you to know as you uh, came in today, you would have seen on your chair, there's a commitment card. And we're going to walk through that a little bit at the end of the service. Um, but what I want you to know is that over the last three weeks, we've been sharing our vision for our church, sharing our vision to stand in the gap for the people of our community. And what we get to experience today, and like I said, if you're a guest, what you get to witness is you get to witness a church coming together. You get to witness people coming together and believing in faith that God can do way more than any of us could do on our own. And so welcome. Everyone is invited into today, and I believe today is one of those days. If I start crying right away, I'm sorry. I'm just feeling it today. But today is one of those days that we're never gonna forget. You're never gonna forget. And, and the beauty of it is that it's not about us. It's not about us, yet we get to be a part. And so welcome, welcome. Stand, as I said, is our vision for how we will live out our mission at Prairie Heights, specifically over the next two years. Together we are choosing to stand for changed lives, for future generations and transform community. And those are the things that we believe that we're going to stand in the gap for, and all of them connecting to people. We have two goals for stand. Our number one primary goal is 100% engagement. That's right. We've been praying that every single person who calls Prairie Heights their church home would engage. What does that mean? That you've been engaging in prayer. That you've been asking God how he would invite you to participate. That you have been along with engaging in prayer, that you are committed and ready to make a financial commitment. And that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Our secondary goal for STAND is that we would expand our giving to $7.7 .7 million over the next two years. That includes our annual budget, what we expect would already come in, plus the expanded giving over two years, $7.7 .7 million. And I want you to hear this today as we get going. I have so much peace in my soul. If God would like to answer any of our goals, that's up to him. What I want for you is more important. I want for you to lean in and to listen to God because today is a really big day. Why is today a really big day? Today is one of those days where rubber meets the road, right? Because it's one thing for you and I to nod our heads and get really excited about what we get to do for our community. It's one thing for us to, to say, yeah, we're going to stand for the people of our community and we're going to uh, be there and we're going to see change, generational change, and we're going to commit to our mission to help one more person have a relationship with Jesus. And it's a whole other thing for you and I to say, I'm going to get in the game and I'm going to be a part of that. It's one thing for you and I to recognize what God might want to do in our financial life and in, our, in that specific area of our life. It's one thing for you and I to know what God wants to do. It's a whole other thing for you and I to take a huge step of faith, to trust God. Many of you are trusting God today by committing to give for the first time. That is a huge step. Many of you today, you're going to commit to giving something in an amount that you've never given before to anything or anyone. That is a huge step of faith. Many of you today, you have already committed to regular giving, and today you have been praying and processing a sacrificial amount that you are going to give to and today, that's a big deal. That's a huge faith step. And I'm so proud that I get to be a part of it. You know, many of you have been asking yourself, should I give? Should I give to stand? And, and many others of you are, are saying, I know I'm going to give, but uh, how much should I give? And I want you to know that you're not alone in asking those questions and that today, 
Today is game day. Today is like the start of what God wants to do. In a lot of ways, I feel like it's a beginning. Today is a faith in action day. And I know what kind of spiritual strength it takes to take a step of faith like this. And I just want you to know, like, I see you. I know that there might be anxiety or fear or a little bit of uh, just feelings around making a, a faith step like you're going to make today. Um, but it's a big deal. And I want you to remember that uh, God is right here with you. God is right here with all of us as we get to do this together. We live in an area, Cass and Clay counties combined, we live in an area that has three larger cities and many small towns that surround that. When we take Cass and Clay counties and take the population and add that together, it's approximately 250,000 people that live in our local community. Of that 250,000, 100,000 people are living apart from God. Of 250,000, 100,000 of those people are living apart from God. That's not okay. That's not okay. And what I love is that we get to be a part of a church, that we are one of the churches that are stepping into that gigantic gap that is saying we're not content with just living our lives uh, disassociated with that reality. We're choosing to actually step into that gap in a really huge way and own the fact that we want to do something about that in, a lo in our local community. And so we will stand for changed lives. The 100,000 people who are living apart from God, we will stand for changed lives. Uh, we use the, the term changed lives a lot around here. And why do we do that? We do that because I don't want this to be a place. I don't want this to be a place that you and I come and go. That we come and we sit in a chair and we consume and then we go and that's it. I want us to be a people, every single one of us to be people who are regularly and consistently changed by Jesus. And that through that change, that when we go out into our community, when we go out where we work and live and play, that because our life has been so changed by Jesus, that other people start to wonder and start to come alongside and say, what do you have that I don't have? And eventually, you can tell them, it ain't you, it's Jesus living in you, living out of you. That's why we talk about changed lives. We want our lives to consistently be changed. Our mission is to connect those apart from God with Christ and a church family. And our mission is to be urgently concerned with the one. To be urgently concerned with the one who's living apart from God. That you and I would step into that gap, that we would take that seriously, and that that's very personal. And so everything we do at Prairie Heights, from kids and teens programming to Sunday services to the way that we serve our community, our grow groups that happen, everything that we do at Prairie Heights is done with the lens of reaching one more. It's done with the lens of connecting to the person who otherwise wouldn't be connected to a church. That's our lens that we think through all the time. And so I want you to know that when you give financially on a regular basis to Prairie Heights, you are giving to change lives. Because everything we do around here revolves around our one mission. So thank you, thank you, thank you. When you choose to give to stand today as we make commitments to that, here's what part of your investment will go towards. I want to explain in the area of change lives, what does that look like? Well, number one, a few of the things that um, your giving will go towards is creating more relevant physical environments. So we uh, love when people come and they say, hey, I felt so warm and welcome and like you were ready for us. And, and we want families to continue to say, this would be a great spot for my kids and my grandkids. And, and no offense, grandpas and grandmas, but we don't really want people to come and say, this would be a great church for my grandma. <laughs> we love you. We love everybody. Everyone is welcome. What well, we want to make sure that we're doing because, right, we're concerned more about our future generations. And I don't want to say more like anyone's more important or less important, but guess what? There's going to be some things already around here that I'm going to be like, why do we do that? 
And I might be like, that doesn't connect with me personally. And our team will say, well, do you want to reach the future generations or not? <laughs> and I'll say, okay. <laughs> it's not about me and my personal preference. And so we want to create environments that are relevant and engaging um, to people that are living apart from, from God. We're going to upgrade technology infrastructure throughout uh, auditorium, kid venture, all of our spaces, and because technology is always changing. Uh, part of that is improving our digital environment. So uh, just uh, context here. When we talk about the front door, right, you all come through the front door, many of you, uh, if you're here in person, and you get those awesome high fives. One of them is my husband, Kyle. He's so great. I hope you got a good high five this morning. Uh, and Charles is likely out there as well. Love you, buddy. Um, but uh, our front door has moved. It's moved, and it's online. Welcome, all of you watching online. Uh, many of you have maybe been invited by somebody here at Prairie Heights, and you have yet to come in person, but you are connecting with us online first. And so we need to uh, look at that, look at our website, social media, online platforms, and continue to engage uh, at a faster, better rate. So those are a few of the things, and I want you to know that you might be here today because you're just checking it out. A family or friend has been inviting you over and over, and, and you came today, and you said yes. Uh, maybe you've been coming for a few months and, and you would say, hey, I, I just feel so great leaving. I'm getting something out of the music and out of the message every single week. And those are all real reasons, but I also want to let us know, like, there's more. What if there's more? And I believe that there is more. The reasons I believe that we're all here today is that we're looking for something. Each and every one of us, we're looking for something. I believe that there is... Um, at times, there's voids in our life, right? And so we chase after all these things in our world to try to fill that void. That we're all searching for a sense of belonging. We're all searching for purpose. And I don't know, maybe you're caught in the middle of addiction today. Maybe you're caught in the middle of sexual addiction or drugs or alcohol, or maybe uh, you're kind of just tired of passing each other in the hallway if you're married and you're just feeling like roommates and you're just feeling like friends, not like lovers, you know, not like a deep intimacy and, and you're searching for something more. Maybe you're struggling as a parent and, and you just feel like you don't have the right tools in your tool belt. And I know that these are our stories because these are your stories. Part of that is my story. And I believe we're all here today because we're searching for something. My life would be lost without Jesus. My life would be a mess without Jesus. I need Jesus every single day. If you would have asked family and friends, if you look up on Facebook, don't do this, please, but if you looked up on Facebook, like some of my friends from college, I don't care, dude, if you want. And you ask them, would you ever think that Beth would be a pastor? They'd say, no way. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you a story. That's the part that I'm like, don't ask. <laughs> we didn't know that this would be my story. Do you know who did, though? God. God knew that this would be my story. And because it's been my story, I know that God has a story for you. I know that God has more for you. I know that he's not done working in your life and that's why what we're doing together today matters so much because we get to step outside of ourselves and by coming together around Stand, we get to choose to have purpose that goes well beyond our life that we live here on earth. And we get to do that together. And I'm so excited that we have the opportunity to do that together. Look what we get to be a part of right here at Prairie Heights, right now, uh, Prairie Heider was processing her commitment to stand with me over the phone, and, and she said, I've been saving up for a brand new car, and I've been saving for a long time, and, and I just had a goal that I just kind of wanted to do that, and so I've been saving cash for that, and, and then there was silence on the phone. And then she said, as I've been praying through stand and what my commitment's going to be, she said, I had to ask myself a question. What do I care more about, a new car or change lives? 
And I just sat there with her and I sat uh, quietly and, and then we just engaged in a heart conversation and what she decided is she decided to be part of Jesus' mission. That God called her and she answered. And, and this type of story is not a new story. It's been happening for thousands of years. Uh, did you know that the very first people Jesus called to follow him, they were a group of everyday fishermen. And that was a very common occupation in the Bible. And one of the first people that Jesus invited to follow him, it was a guy by the name of Simon, who later is named Simon Peter. You might recognize his name just as Peter. And we read this story in Matthew 4. Let's take a look. 4, 18 through 20. It says, One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fish for a living. And Jesus called out to them and he said, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. See, they had known, they had heard about this Jesus guy, and they had known about his ministry and what he was teaching. And so when they recognized that that's who it was, and he invited them, and he said, come and follow me, and I will teach you. I will show you how to fish for people. They just said, all right, I'm in. I'm in on that mission. I'm in on having a purpose beyond our life here on earth. See, what was Jesus doing though when he was calling them? He was calling them away from their trade business to go fishing instead for people, spiritually. He was inviting them to this purpose that was bigger than their life, their everyday life as fishermen. Uh, growing up, for me, my grandparents had a lake cabin uh, over by the Detroit Lakes area, and we got to go there. And I remember just young, at the age of five, I would go and I'd get out of the car and I'd run out and I'd say, Grandpa, can I go fishing? Can I go fishing? Can we go fishing? And as excited as I was to go fishing, I didn't always have the patience to wait to catch fish. But I remember throughout the years, my grandpa would just kindly, slowly engage with me and he would teach me where, what time of day to go to catch fish. He would teach me where to go on the lake to catch the most amount of fish. He would say, here's what lure you want to use if you want to catch a certain type of fish. And so through time with my grandpa, I learned how to fish. And there's so many special moments and memories. And that same thing is true as in the early days, these disciples, these followers of Jesus, as they spent time with him, they learned how to fish for people. Jesus was teaching them and showing them how to fish for people. What does that look like today? The more that you and I follow Jesus, the more that we learn how to fish for people. Last week, we shared a video about future generations, about our kids and our teens and them going first. And, and as we shared that video, we shared it on social media, there was a prairie hider who's newer to prairie heights, and she came because she wanted a place for her kids to find faith. She wasn't necessarily at first concerned about her own walk. And then all of a sudden, she uh, posted this video, and, and then a friend commented on it. And a friend said, I have not wanted to step into church for years, but I want the same thing for my kids that you're talking about. And through that dialogue on social media, there is an invitation. That's how you, how, this is how we fish. Is our lives become changed by Jesus? This mom's life, she said, hey, I came for my kids and now God's changing my life. And as her life is being changed, it's impacting the people that she has influence with. That's fishing for people. Last week, a group of guys who have been part of girl groups around here, they dropped what they were doing in the middle of the week, and they went and they helped someone move. No strings attached. They just went and helped someone move. That's fishing for people. That's fishing for people. Jesus said, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. See, part of fishing for people is investing in stand. As you and I choose to invest financially in stand, we are fishing for people, because that's what we do here at Prairie Heights. When you give to the church, all the money that comes in goes towards changed lives here at Prairie Heights. It's so that one more person can connect their life to Christ and to a church family and be part of this. 
See, Jesus spent three years with these guys, with Peter and other disciples and followers, and he was showing them how to fish for people. And then, you know what Jesus did? He did what he came on earth to do. He not only showed them how to fish and shared with them what he wanted for them, but then he went and followed through and chose to die on a cross, a brutal death. And then he rose again. And when he rose again, do you want to know what he chose to do? He appeared to his followers after he rose from the dead. He appeared to Simon Peter and to some others. And you know what they were doing? They were fishing. And when Jesus came up on the, on the beach, they didn't really recognize him right away. And he said, hey, friends, haven't you caught anything? They'd been fishing all day and all night and they hadn't caught anything. And no, they answered. And he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And we read in John 21, 6, it says, when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. I found that so interesting that the very first thing Jesus did as he began his ministry is he met these guys that were out fishing and he said, come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men and women. And then like he fulfills the mission that he has and, and he dies a brutal death and he, he raises from the dead. And he did what he said he was going to do. And then he appears again. And the last thing that he does is he shows up to them while they're fishing. And they can't catch anything, but he says, hey, throw your net out. And I wonder, I wonder, it just, it caused my heart to say, is Jesus trying to tell them, hey, when you fish with me, I'm going to provide. Hey, guys, don't forget, when you make me the center of your life, I'm going to make sure that you have plenty. I'm going to make sure that I take care of you. I'm going to make sure that, that I am with you. And now, don't hear this wrong, okay? When, when we follow Jesus, it doesn't mean our life is easier. <laughs> In a lot of ways, we get into a battle, and it's a spiritual battle, and it can look harder than it did before. It doesn't mean that when we give financially, God's going to reward us back financially. That's not always the case. See, these fo early followers of Jesus, they followed him. And then guess what? There was, a, there was thousands of people that began to follow Jesus because of their faith. And then most of them were martyred for their faith. But here we are, 2,000 years later, and because of their faith and because of what they shared, because of what they had seen and experienced with Jesus, there are billions of people who are following Jesus. I want us to know today that as we make this commitment, as we step forward in faith, that we're going to see some results short term. We're going we're gonna to see some results short term, but I want you also to know that the legacy that we're leaving, we may not see all the fruit of what's happening today. It might be your great, 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 great grandchildren who get to experience the fruit of what you're committing to today. And my question to us is, are we willing to step in and make commitments that are going to be long lasting, that we may never see the fruit, but we would be faithful anyway in what God is asking us to do? My answer to that is yes, I will be faithful. Today we have an opportunity to go fishing. Isn't that great? We have an opportunity to believe that God has more. That when we live our life with Jesus, we can live a life of abundance. Today is a commitment day. It's a huge step of faith. It's a stake in the ground day. It's us saying we choose to stand in the gap for the people of our community, for those who are living apart from God and in potentially one of the hardest areas of our life, right, the area of finances, can be one of the most difficult areas of our life to dig into. You are saying, God, I'm asking you to help me. God, I'm releasing control in this area. God, I want to find freedom 
so that you can be my provider and I can trust you in ways that I never have. I'm praying that for you today. I'm praying that for all of us. The reason that I want all of us to engage, it's real simple. I don't want you to miss out. I don't want you to miss out on this moment. I don't want you to miss out on what God wants to do in your heart. I don't want you to miss out on being a changed life. And if your life's already been changed by Jesus, he's not done yet. (laughs) He's not done changing your life. And I don't want you to miss out on that. The, The trust step that we are taking today is through our stand commitment. Many of you came today and you had a commitment card filled out and you have clarity on what God is inviting you to commit to. And some of you came today and you still don't have quite clarity or Uh, You haven't quite thought about what God might be inviting you to. That's okay. Either way is okay. We're going to have time here in just a moment. And so I want to take a moment to explain this commitment card another time before we get up and and we share our commitments and, and hand in our commitments. And so today, if you're here and you've never given to Prairie Heights, or maybe you've given sporadically, what you're going to do is you're going to pray and ask God and, and you're going to fill out the first box and that's going to be a commitment that you're going to make for one year. What's an amount that you're going to make for one year commitment to stand? If that's you and that's your scenario, you're going to skip the second box. You're going to leave that blank and then you're going to multiply that first box by two and that gets you your full stand commitment. That's your complete stand commitment for two years. If you're someone who came today and you've been regularly giving at Prairie Heights, and so like the Nelson household, we're going to put what we regularly give in a year in the first box, and then the second box, we're going to give, we're going to put the amount, the expanded giving amount that God has asked us to give in the second box for one year. We're going to add those two numbers together. We're going to multiply that by two, and that's our complete stand commitment. If you're watching online today, you, all you have to do is click the link and that will give you the opportunity to engage through Stand. And if you're watching online today, I want you to know that uh, if you've got someone that you're praying for to know Jesus, that we're going to have some volunteers here in the room that when you put, type the name of the people that you're praying to know Jesus, the volunteers in the room are going to come up to that map of Cass and Clay County and they're gonna put those names on the map. I'll explain that a little more in just a moment. So in just a few minutes, we will be handing in our commitment cards. Uh, The band's gonna be playing while we engage with the stand commitment. So there's gonna be time for you to process and pray with God. There's gonna be time for you to even chat with your family if needed, okay? Uh, Prairie Hider emailed me last week with their commitment card. I asked a small group of leaders, I said, will you go first with the stand commitment? Will you lead the way behind the scenes? And there was a small group of people that went first and their faith has inspired me and the stories of how God is moving and stirring is incredible. And I had a a prey hider who was the first person to hand in their stand commitment. This person was always also the first person to say, God asked me to change my commitment. And he asked me to increase my commitment. And so last week she gave me a new commitment card with an increased commitment. And she said this, God has truly fallen on my heart to not only take a stand for the community, but also to take a radical trust journey with his son. I know Jesus is gonna be an incredible travel partner. (laughs) Isn't that awesome? Some of you came today with an amount and I believe God's gonna change it. God's gonna change it between now and when you get up to hand it in. And if that's you, you know that that's you. If that's not you, (laughs) it's not you. But I know God's gonna do that for some of you. And here's the other thing that I know God's gonna do, and I wanna be super clear. If you're married today, I want you both to have clarity from God, and I want you both to have unity. If there's not unity, take more time. Okay, unity with God, unity with each other. If there's not unity, take more time to find peace and to find unity. That is more important. Your marriage, unity, your unity in Jesus working in your life is more important. Okay, and so as we engage in this few moments, 
I want us all to remember as you hand in your commitment card, what's the most important part of today? The most important part of today is the who. Who are you praying for to connect their life with Jesus? Who do you want to know Jesus? Because why are we doing all this? Why are we doing stand? We're doing it for people. We're doing it for people. Go ahead and take a look. Before I came here, there was a, a big gap in my relationship with God, a good part of 35 years. When my wife and I started coming here, I was just going to do the Sunday thing, punch in, punch out, and then Emily's like, hey, let's go to a playbook, and I'm like, yeah, no, because then I'd have to talk to people. When I walked through that door, I was greeted, the, the energy, the excitement, I was truly welcome there. It's the people that make you smile. It's the people you want to come back and meet. When you have that feeling, you can't deny that. And then I thought about being part of the production team, and then I had played in a band before. I said, hey, I don't know if I'm good enough, but I'll sign up. It has changed the way I look at my family and my job. I, I can really feel that my walk with Jesus brings passion that I hadn't had in, in previously. It's the first time I've ever been in a men's group or done a Bible study. So my faith is getting stronger just by that, not to mention the, the influence that we get every Sunday. I struggled for a few years, went through all the therapy and the counseling. I tried to end my life because I did not feel that I was capable of doing anything by myself. I wasn't going to be here and then I was. I was given a second chance. For me, Prairie Heights was a place that I realized that church is not just for perfect people. Church is for broken people. Church is for people who are hurting. It's for people going through something. It's for anyone who needs a place to go to hear a message that will get them one tiny step closer to Jesus. I know that I would not be um, the person that I am today without having Christ as the center of my life um, as a woman, as a mother, as a wife. And um, I wouldn't want to have done it without the community that I've had at Prairie Heights. Stand is important to me because Prairie Heights has been um, that foundational element of faith for our life. It's where we come on the weekend to worship, but then also get filled up so that we can do our best to live according to God's will in our life throughout the week. I choose to give to stand is because it's all his to begin with and he's entrusted me. So how will I take that gift and gift others? Either you or your kids will benefit from what you invested into God's kingdom, into God's work so that we can make sure everyone got the chance, the opportunity to hear about Jesus Christ. If there's somebody out there that doesn't know Jesus, I want to be part of introducing them to him. Very Heights, this is how I stand for changed lives. Will you stand with me? So let's fish for people. Let's stand together. Let's do something together that will change people of our community, whether they step foot in our church or not. Let's make it more about people who don't know Jesus. <laughs> let's grow in our faith by our willingness and our availability to say, God, would you use us? God, would you use me? In any way, would you use the resources you've given me? Would you use this group of people to do what only you can do? And so we're going to go into a time, it's going to be a, a about 15 minutes, where we're going to hear the band play. And as we do, I want you to have your space. You can pray, you can talk to family that you're with, but that will be the time to, when you're ready, to get up and hand in your stand commitment card. 
And the most important thing is you do that, is there's little tags with pins on the tables where you need to write the name of one or two people in your life that you want them to know Jesus, that we're going to put up on the map for Cass and Clay County. If they don't live here, just put it on the outside of the map, or right on the map, but on the exterior. Because why are we doing this? We're doing it because of people, and we want more people to come to know the hope that we found. And so this really matters that we get to do this together, and I'm so thankful that you and I have the opportunity to do that. So I'm gonna come back after this time and of us committing to stand. And after I come back up, we're gonna celebrate what God is doing in our midst, what we get to be a part of in so many ways. So let me pray for us as we get ready. God, would you meet every single person exactly where they're at right now in this moment? God, would you speak to people? Would you give them Holy Spirit confidence that what you're calling them to and what you're inviting them to is, is not just numbers on a, on a paper. It's a changed heart. It's a changed heart from the inside out. And, and God, I thank you that you invite us to be part of this moment. And so God, would you be with us in this moment? Would you help us to connect our hearts with you? And would you bring names to mind of people that you want us to be intentional about praying for, that you want us to be here to be a church for those people? Would you bring names to mind right now that we get to pray over, that we get to um, be a part of their life in some way? And God, we know that the results are all up to you, and so we release any pressure or tension. Uh, this isn't our responsibility, it's yours, God, and so this is a moment now, next, God, for you to show off We've showed up, God. Now would you please show off. We love you so much and we pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. So as I said, you can sit, you can stand, you can engage in whatever way you would like. The band will be playing. Uh, go ahead and do what feels comfortable for you. And when you're ready, go ahead and stand and you can go over to that area of the auditorium where you can hand in your stand commitment and write your names and put them on the map. i
Jesus, light of heaven, friend forever, his kingdom Walking around these walls And I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet And waiting for a change to come And knowing the battle For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands And this is my confidence You've never
saints and great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands and this is my confidence you've never failed me faith it just blows me away who uh, seeing all of us engage in that and just the the quickness of the obedience in the room I don't want us to ever forget this moment I don't want us to ever forget what it feels like to step out in faith for other people <laughs> to step out in faith because we believe that God's gonna do more in and through us. Uh, my husband Kyle and I, we are so humbled, right? Like so humbled that we get to be a part of this, that God has invited us to be a part of this church family alongside each and every one of you. And we're gonna keep believing in Ephesians 3.20, it says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Don't forget, this isn't your power. This is not my power, this is not your power. This is God's power at work within us. I pray he releases every ounce of, of control. He gives you freedom today and beyond. Today's just the beginning. Now we gotta walk it out, right? <laughs> I love you so much, and we're going to believe that through God's power that he's going to do more than we could ever imagine over and over again through generations and through faith. And so, uh, Kyle, you can say anything you want, but if you would also close us with prayer, that would be great. Thanks. Uh, as a farmer, uh, for me right now, it's a little bit discouraging. I can't be in the fields, um, but... Right now, I have hope because um, God, God has called me to grow the farm. He has called me not to be a fisherman, fisher of men, but a farmer of men. And uh, today, I got to do a different type of planting. If I look over at that board, uh, that looks like seeds to me. And um, I know that there cannot be a harvest unless you first have a planting season. And uh, there's there's this hope that you have in planting season that that there's going to be a return on investment. And just like when I plant seeds in the dirt, that seed disappears for a season. You don't see it anymore. But you plant in faith. You give in faith. And you work. And then you trust that God is going to show up. And there will be a germination. And there will be, there will be growth. And it's our job to partner with God. And, and to work and to fertilize and to weed. And there will be a harvest. And today I got to be a part of uh, planting some seeds that are gonna be, um, yeah, hope and legacy that go far beyond my, my bushels at the farm. So uh, pray with me. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I just uh, thank you for each and every heart in this room. Um, yeah, we truly believe that you will do a great and mighty um, work through all the people who gave with open and willing faithful hearts. Um, I just pray that you take these seeds, these seeds of faith, and that uh, you do what only you can do. There will be a great harvest one day. There will be great changed lives. And that there will be a legacy that will be um, had uh, for many generations. We, we believe in great things. We trust in it. We know it. And we're going to give you all the praise and glory. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen.